there is no use of the word cheat that is positive. <laughs> Episode of Anti Diet TV. Thanks so much for being here. And um, yeah, fam, like I want to talk about, like if you think about the word cheat, right? For some reason, in the realm of dieting, health, fitness, this sort of realm, for some reason, it snuck its way into basically people's analogy um, when they're tied in relation to food, right? If you think about it with relationships, right? Like if you're cheating on your partner, that's obviously negative, right? Like it's fucked, you shouldn't be doing that. It's shunned upon. Shunned and non-believer. Shunned. Shunned. Right? If you've got like a test or an exam and you cheat in that, obviously you'll be failed. Like it's not looked upon favorably, right? You try and think of any context, right? You know what I mean? Like it's always gonna be a negative scenario, yeah? So for some reason, like I still can't understand why people associate it when it comes to food, because it's like you're not cheating on fucking anything, you see what I mean? So the whole analogy of it like is basically where um like where you have this like meal or day of just where you can just eat whatever you want without any perceived or associated guilt and whatever and um yeah like it's typically i find like i don't know exactly who invented it but it's like i find that through my own research it stemmed from um in the bodybuilding space so where people would like eat their like, within their small scope of super like hashtag clean meals in terms of chicken brown rice broccoli oats beans um you know egg whites oats and just that sort of main stuff like they would have all their meals just super on point, um, seven days of the week, but they would have one meal where they would just eat hard, whatever they wanted in favor of boosting some aspects of their metabolism, stuff like that, and then back on the grind the rest of the time, and then that eats its way into conventional dieting and, the, and, the, and diet culture in general, and um, the health and fitness space, um, where it's like, it's my cheat meal, bro. Um, and then, you know, like it, for some reason validates your you know inclination to want to go hard but that's the thing fam like if you already have a pre-existing fairly shit stop and start relationship with your body image with food and stuff like that i would highly encourage you to get rid of that analogy yeah and um basically instead like let's say like it's all about context really like say for example for me right i'm in complete lifestyle lean maintenance mode right I'm not prepping for any comps. Um, you know, I'm not um, dialing in to try and get stage lean or photo shoot lean or anything like that. It's just like, I'm just living, right? So therefore, like, this is where it's easy to be able to have a burger feed here and there, like a sizzler feed here and there, like whatever it may be, I can have that here and there and get away with it because it's like, you know what I mean? It fits within the context of the goal at the time. And keep in mind, I've already got a really strong pre-existing relationship with food. I've got a really good, uh, you know, body image persona. Um, like, I'm just consistent. Like, it's easy. You see what I mean? But for someone who, say, for example, is going through, um, you know, their journey and they don't already have a really strong relationship with food and they find that they're stopping starting and stuff like that, well, then getting into the whole scenario of cheat meals, rah, 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 like all that's going to do is just make their binge eating tendencies worse, right? And you've probably even found it if you've dabbled with that yourself. Like you probably found that you were like, oh man, I'm so keen for this cheat meal. Fuck, it's going to be so good. And you're looking through Pinterest about all this shit you're going to make. And you're like, oh man, I don't know if I want takeaway. Like I reckon I might go to KFC and smash like a family bucket. Like you just, all your thoughts are on this one YOLO feed. But then as soon as it's gone, you're like, oh fuck, I come back to reality and I've got to eat all this fucking boring food. And you know what I mean? And, and you're counting down the days until it's your next YOLO meal time, right? So what's a much more better approach to it is just like stop making the grind so hard, like unless you're comp prepping by all means, but it's like if you're a gen pop person who 
you know, is just trying to get healthier and improve their relationship with food and get lean over time. If I were you, like, don't grind so much with trying to eat 100% hashtag clean all the time. Like, learn how to incorporate pleasure foods into your eating as often as possible, every day if possible. So that way, the associated novelty around wanting to eat processed food diminishes. And then when those cravings do come along, you learn how to incorporate them into your overall eating choices. So that, that way you don't have the desire to want to go hard and go nuts on, any, on like food to that extreme quantity. Um, and then that way you'll get to your goals in a much more smoother manner. And then when it comes to maintenance and if you've been coached properly, you'll be able to have burger feeds easily and stuff like that. And this is something that I actually adapt into my coaching strategies when I'm working with someone longer term and we're looking to get them to their goal weight and help them stay there, right? And even if you're, say, for example, of the notion that is, well, it doesn't matter, Angus, bro, like, I'm fucking bulking, yo. Well, it's like, guess what, mate? Like, if you're trying to bulk and you're wanting to make sure that you don't just get fucking fat, right? Well, then you can't just adapt the analogy that is, I'm just going to eat YOLO calories all the time or whatever. Like, if you push yourself too much into a surplus, you're just going to get fat. And then you're going to have to end up cutting that extra fat, um, you know, in terms of just, like, going back into a cut again sooner. And it just becomes a, a, a scenario of chasing your tail where you're endlessly going from bolt to cut, bolt to cut, and never really having the shape that you want. You see what I mean? So I'd be keen to hear what's your thoughts around the whole realm that is cheat meals, cheat days, that sort of stuff. I'd be keen to hear your experience with it. And uh, if you found this video valuable, if you have any questions around this whole topic, hey, light up those comments section below. Um, let's keep the conversation going. Otherwise, big thanks for watching. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you in next week's episode of Anti-Diet TV. Peace.